and welcome to Yachting Monthly's How To Series, brought to you in association with GJW Direct. I'm Matthew Sheehan, and over the course of 13 episodes, we're going to be dealing with some of the key issues when it comes to maintenance and talking to some of the experts to get their tips. I'm Rachel Sprott from Rubicon 3. I'm one of the directors and skippers. Um, we have three 60-foot expedition yachts which we sail around the North Atlantic. And today we're going to look at sail repair. I'm Rob Kemp from Kemp Sails. I started Kemp Sails 35 years ago. Uh, we manufacture sails from small dinghies to 60, 70, 80 foot offshore cruising yachts, uh, similar to the ones that Rachel's got. So you're going to talk us through some sail first aid concepts and what we can do to fix our sails when Absolutely. we're out there. I think the idea of sail first aid is the important thing to, to consider because you know, if you're on a boat, actually being able to properly repair something is, without the right equipment is nail on impossible. So to try and mitigate the amount of damage you might cause to the sail, to get it back to a sail maker that can then repair it properly is, is what I think we're looking at in terms of uh, concept really. Yeah. And what are the kind of three or four most common issues that uh, people come in with? Something like we've got here with a, a tear in the sail. You know, somebody's, if it's a Genoa, you stuck the spreader through it or you've caught the mainsail on something when you're reefing. That's a, a really common rip. Looks really dramatic, really simple yeah. to fix on the boat um, in a way that allows you to get it back to a sailmaker later to have it repaired properly. Yeah. Uh, sail slides ripping off, that's a really good one. Yeah, we <laughs> do a lot of that. Particularly if you're on a reef position here where you've maybe someone's put the reef in and left the kicker on you've winched the halyard up inadvertently and you've ripped the slide out the front of the sail. Yeah. Being able to re-sew a slide on, on the on the boat will save a lot of faff and having to take the sail off to the yeah. sail maker is something you can do yourself and will save you a few quid as well. Okay, cool. So in terms of repairing something like that, really what you're looking for is, is this material here. This is um, this is the your friend for repairing things like that. It's basically uh, what we refer to as PSA, but it's a uh, sail number material. Okay. Um, you can go to a channel and buy those little boxes of um, sail repair tape, they're next to useless. Yeah. If you go to any local sail maker and ask if you can buy a metre or two of, of sail number material, you can get it in one and a half metre wide rolls, or you can get it in various different widths, like this one here is a 50 millimetre wide roll that comes pre-slit. It's not horrifically expensive. Have a roll of stuff like that sitting in your locker, you can repair most things. Brilliant. It's the sole making version of gaffer tape. <laughs> Amazing. So, so does, a, that, does that need to be dry before you can stick it on? Yeah, I mean, if it? it's salt, obviously you're in a salty environment, you really want to get yeah. the cloth, wipe it down, um, and just leave it to dry on a sunny day. Or if you've got power on the boat, a hair dryer is quite a good thing. Or a hair dryer, yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to dry it off. Um, salt is an issue because it won't stick very well, and wet it won't stick very yeah. well. And you need to try and get it flat. So it's something where you must have drop a few sides yeah. out and lay it on the deck to do it, or put it on the dock. But you know, if you've got a fully battened mainsail, that's a bit of a faff. So yeah. trying to do it on the boat is, is quite doable. Or putting a cutting board or something behind the sail and get something to hold it, and you can stick it against it, that could work. Yeah. It is, for those of you of a certain age, it's like Blue Peter's sticky back plastic and stuff. <laughs> Here's one you prepared earlier. So there's one I've already done. So when you're cutting a, a patch like this out, this, this stuff is great because on the back of it you can see all these lines. You haven't got to draw any lines, you can just follow one of the, one of the pen lines. But if you just cut down to make a rectangle, you need to make the patch disproportionately bigger than the rip. It's really structural, this stuff. Is it? But what you're working on is the adhesion of the, of the glue so it doesn't slip. So if you've got something trying to pull apart like that, if you've got yeah. a big spread of glue, it will stop it tearing. Okay. Uh, having sharp corners is a no-no because they'll peel up. So just cut a, a very basic radius on the, on the corner. You need quite sharp scissors. So a decent pair of scissors on the boat is mm -hmm. a, a good investment. And uh, if you don't use them often, just keep them lightly oiled so they don't get rusty. Oh, good tip. When I was learning um, sail repair, I was taught you might sew through that. You can. Um, but you say the, maybe it's not, well, not always necessary. With stitching it, you, you could stitch it with a, with a thread like that. But if you can see, it's quite a chunky thread. Yeah. It's quite a big needle. And you're making so you're bigger make holes. pretty big holes. If it's torn, you know, particularly on a sail like this, you can see it's gone quite yellow because normal sail cloth is quite white. The yellowing is indicative of UV damage. So if you stick holes in it, just you're going to put a whole row of holes around either side of it. You can have a toilet paper syndrome where it's just going to tear along the holes. So something like a, a self-adhesive patch, yeah. you've got no punctures in the in the sail. And it means when you do get it back to a sailmaker, they, you know, they, they can just cut that section out. 
it sounds dramatic cutting a big chunk of sail out like this, but it's actually really easy. Um, okay. And uh, we can then sew around it and we cut the damaged material away and off you go again. Yeah. So that's a far better way of repairing it than sticking needles in it. So the less we can bodge it, the better in yeah. a way. <coughs> don't use... Um, less is more. Don't use epoxies or... Um, you know, Evo stick or stuff like that, because that, that's a nightmare when we no come to repair flex. it. No <laughs> sick of flex. I mean, if that's all you've got, then fine. Yeah. But bear in mind that all that damage there is going to have to be removed um, and or unglued, and that yeah. takes time and time costs you money, basically. So this stuff is, is really good. So you can actually sew through this. So you know, if yeah. we repaired it, we had to sew through some of it. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. So come to sticking it on, just peel off a little bit. So I'm getting blind in my elbows. Just peel off a little bit. Try and make a straight line. Make a little grease in like that. So you've got the sticky part and then the uh, the backing. Lay it on top of the sail. Don't be particularly accurate. You don't really want it sitting on a seam like that because it won't adhere very well. So Work it on the sail. Rub, rub it in. The sail needs to be clean and, clean and dry as we discussed. And slowly peel the back away. Just work your fingers along it. And then give it a good rub. Warm it up a bit. Well, you know, glues work with pressure mm. and, and heat, so if you give it a good, good rub and put some pressure on it, it's going to make sure it sticks really well. That's it, job done. Yeah. Ideally, you want to put the other one we prepared onto the other side of the sail, like so, to stop it catching. And you could go for thousands of miles like that. Amazing. You've got the sail home and it's cost you a few pounds for some sticky back yeah. sailcloth. And what's the maximum size tear that you would attempt to fix with a, a patch like um, that? That's a good question. Uh, as long as it's a straight tear and it's not an actual gaping hole, yeah. well, any size you like. Wow. You know, we, we use this material in the sail loft when we're doing a, a massive repair. So take a sail like this, if it's come in with a Lufter Leach rib, which is fairly common, yeah. um, we would use strips of this to stick the, the damaged area together to make sure the trigonometry of the sail's right. Yeah. Then we put the new sail cloth on and then cut all that stuff away. So you, you could do a pretty big rip. Okay. Not on uh, laminate sails, like cruiser laminates or race laminate sails. You, you, We've seen sails with the whole clue area, like two metres by two metres with this stuff holding it wow. together. Wow, gosh. Um, so it is, it's amazing stuff. So one of the things we find is that reefing or not having enough halyard tension on or whatever reason the sliders get worn really heavily and they're quite often coming out. Yeah, it's common, uh, particularly reefing. Okay. You know, with the kicker gets left on, somebody pulls the halyard up and the end of the, the clue, the end of the boom to the first slide above the reef makes the hypotenuse yeah. and you rip the slide out. I mean, what yeah. we do on sales for, for your boats is we actually make the, the slider above the reefs on a bungee. So if that happens, bungee snaps, Yeah. you just put another one on. Um, but you know, lots of sails aren't made like that. So what tends to happen, either the eye rips clean out the front of the sail or in this, this case, the little plastic shackles snapped or the slide snapped, so you need to, to fix another one. Now, yeah. if you've got one of these on the boat, that's great. They just clip on with a pair of mold grips. There's another version with a screw you can screw on, but if you haven't, sail slide, piece of webbing, and a needle and palm, and, and away you go. So first thing you need to do is cut a short length of webbing, doesn't have to be massively long, enough to do two or three wraps round. Pass it through the slide, right glass this time again, uh, back through the hole in the sail. So you're, you're looking to make sure you get the same standoff as the other sliders, because if you don't, you'll find you'll either get a crease from the slide or you'll put too much load on the slide. So they need to stand off a similar distance. You just wrap it around a couple of times, fiddly, getting it through the slides. And about 12 mil webbing is good for doing this because it fits through most of the uh, most sail slides that you'll find, and through most eyelets, like so. So you, you're at, at that position. So two or three Two, two or three laps. Yeah, I mean obviously depending on the size of the boat, the boat's like you're yeah. just maybe three or four. Yeah. This is off a 32 footer, so a couple of wraps of 12 mil webbing is going to be plenty strong enough. Okay. And then it's it's stitching it time. Now stitching, you've got a couple of options. You can either stitch it through the middle of the sail and, and cramp it like that, but that tends to make the slide not articulate particularly well. Uh, okay. So depending on the type of mast and the, the type of slider, you really want the slide to articulate. So as you're pulling the sail up, the slide's getting yeah. sort of towed from its top, and that stops it capsizing stops it. In, the, in the groove and jamming up. 
Mm -hmm. Probably find quite a lot of boats you go onto, you try and pull the sail slides up and you get that they get snagged, yeah. And that's partly because the mast grooves probably dirty, but also because the sides are going to be put on properly. Mm, all these they little just details. They stitch down the side with like a, like a running stitch. Just a couple of mil apart each time. And if you're using the wax thread like this, when you get to the end, you should just tie a knot in it. Find the split of the thread. And if you pull it, the knot slides down oh, and locks clever. up against the thing. Just chop that's it off. So neat. And if you've got a cigarette lighter, just burn off the loose ends to stop it free. And that's a really quick fix on the sail slide. Yeah, that Which will keep you going quick. all season. And you probably even don't even need to take it to sail makers. Yeah. So something else that we've been looking at is um, not necessarily a repair, yeah. but a little upgrade we could do. Perhaps it's kind of come from the big boat cruising aspect as well, but something that's going to make reefing a lot easier on a smaller boat. Um, so you pointed out that most reefing points on smaller boats won't necessarily have these reef spectacles on them. I think a lot of budget sails, obviously this has a little bit of time and cost to it, and some sails are more budget driven don't have them, they just have the ring, which is actually really difficult yeah. sometimes to put a reef in, particularly with really further up reefs. You know, on boats like yours, you've got quite a bit of stack height, yeah. there's no chance would you get the reef on without Especially having a, windy. a spectacle. So adding a, 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 a reef spectacle, it's like a sail making hack, it's stuff you can do yourself, it's pretty cheap to do. Yeah. You need to get yourself some, some 25 mil webbing. And you, you'll pick this up at any sail maker or most cover makers. Some decent stainless steel A rings. You'll need uh, a palm, some wax thread, a pair of pliers, and a needle. And when you're buying your palm, buy a decent one. Your cheap, really thin, flimsy ones are horrible, and it's really easy for the needle to slip out the, the, yeah. the section, and you end up Ouch. in your hand. In there. <laughs> <laughs> you get nice. So. I'll cut this with a pair of scissors because we have a hot knife on the, on the boat. So just again using a cigarette lighter just to give it a quick, quick seal, um, which will stop it fraying. And now you get your, your ring. Pass it through the hole in the sail. And the length you make the spectacle is kind of important because the further up the sail you go, the higher the stack height of sail slides. More important if it's a fully battened main sail because the slides are quite long compared to a little plastic slide that we put on earlier. These are relatively yeah. short, aren't they? So the stack height's not so big. Yeah. The fully battened car could be two, three times that length. So if you're doing your third reef, you might find that that spectacle, oh, lost the ring off it, needs to be longer than the, um, the middle one. Cut this bit out. So, uh, pop the, uh, the webbing through the hole in the sail, feed the other A ring on. At this point, you get your, you set your length, so I always fold the back to hold it in position. Feed it through, back through the hole in the sail. You've got to try and make sure you don't get a gap like that with one webbing's tight and the other one's slack. Mm. There's a bit of fiddling around to get it to line up, so when it's under load, they're all sitting the same. It's not difficult, it's just fiddly. Okay, so now we've got it located. Got one ring sitting up there. I always tend to start on an edge just to keep it tidy because it's uh, there's no right or wrong way. Where well, you've got quite a lot of thickness of webbing, this is when you might start needing pliers because it's uh, getting it through is quite difficult. Try not to stab yourself because blood doesn't come out of sails very well. <laughs> and then you just do a stitch through. You can get quite fancy pliers that have got a little groove down in here to take a needle, which we use at work, but oh, wow. you know, a normal set of pliers will do just as well. quite important when you're doing this that um, you put quite a lot of stitching in it. Yeah. It's the stitching that's going to hold all your halley attention when, when you're reefed. Stitching reached. a lot of load. When you're reefed it's going to be windy so there's going to be lots of load on it. So if in doubt, more's good. Yeah. Now 
And again, you were using quite a thick, fat wax thread there. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a flat whipping twine. Yeah. You can get most well, sewmakers got it, or or sewmaking supply companies have got it. You know, people like um, Bainbridge Marine or Ko Spruce will, will sell retail. Okay. If you're local sewmaker, it's not inclined. At Bainbridge, you've got an online website, so you can order it online. Sail slightly, you can either tie a knot in the thread or you can just do like a half stitch so you go in through there and out through the yeah, out through the gap so you don't see the loose edge. So you can either do it as I've done there, round through like so, or yeah. I personally would put it through back through the ring. This sail hasn't got a bolt rack, so it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you were doing it the other way, which we'll show you in a second, you put it through so it looks like this here. Okay. If you see this one, it's got plenty of stitching on it. So you've got lots of stitching by each ring, another bunch of stitching by that ring, and a whole bunch in the middle there. Yeah. And three or four layers. And then when you come to refit, it's your reef hook's down here. You literally just hook that onto the reef hook. And another neat thing you can do on the reef hook, if you take your reef hooks off, take it to a fabricator and get them to weld on a Witchard style hank drawn with the clips on it. You clip that on and there's no way when the sails were flapping about when you're reefing can the reef hook, the reef ring fall off the hook. So what are we going to carry in this onboard first aid kit for our sails? I mean, so I did as much as little as you like. I mean for a, a you know, a boat that's going to go coastal-ish, cruising up and down the West Country, across the Channel, etc. What we've got here, I think, is a pretty good mix. Yeah. I mean, if you turn in order of priority, 100% this stuff is your friend. Yeah. Uh, which is the PSA sticky back fabric, perfect for repairing tears. Because uh, you can, as we did earlier on, you can just cut a little square out, stick it over a rib, and it will fix all sorts of things. Brilliant. If you're holding in battens if they've fallen out, and it's totally your friend. Yeah. Um, you can also get, I mean, we cut pre-made discs like this, I mean you can buy it and cut it yourself, but we have a mm -hmm. program on the cut table for doing this. Really good for spreader end chafe, so having a few of those is good. Um, or fully batten mainsails with the batten pockets chafe on the, on the rig, so it's yeah. handy. A, a good palm, invest decent money in a palm. Those cheap, thin things are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, prone to stabbing yourself, so a, a good quality palm's worth having. Decent pair of scissors, um, we use the Fisker ones in the loft. Um, they're really nice. Um, if you're going to do any splicing, maybe set with these splicer scissors as well because they're really good for cutting dynema. Um, wax hand sewing thread and an array of needles. Um, some webbings, so a 25mm webbing and a 12mm webbing. Good for yeah. sail slides, good for fixing you know, re spectacles and things like that we did earlier on. Yeah. Um, this is the same as this stuff, it's um, PSA backed but it's pre, pre slit down into narrow width, so again, that's quite handy to have. And after that, you get into a bit more specialist. I personally would have a decent supply of nuts and bolts. Um, these are just little M4 stainless steel nuts and bolts. Most leech line cleats like this are held on with rivets. You cannot re-rivet it on the back mm. on board because you need a special tool for it. Whereas that goes on the back of the sail, that's on the front of the sail, and a nut and bolt, yeah. job done. One of those catches on the rigging, it's quite common, they get pulled off. Okay. So having nuts and bolts is really handy. Uh, if your sails use these things, which are Ren Sagal leech line cleats, these break for a pastime up through here. Right. Um, so having a leech line cleats quite a handy thing to carry. So spare sail slides and shackles, a few of those. Um, I would always have one of those, a, a fid or a braddle. Yeah. Really good if you've got any heavy, heavy stitching to do, you can hammer it through the sail to make the hole first. Yeah. So that's quite useful. Um, good pair of pliers, cigarette lighter for sealing the threads. Cell makers friend, double sided sticky tape. Oh, okay. And if you're doing any repairs like this stuff here, this is pre slip tape. So it's good if you've got a, a damaged sail slide like, like here, you need to repair it, you can, you can cut pieces out. Yeah. Double sided tape will hold it in place. Well, it's like the cell making there. versions of pins. We use tons of the stuff. Amazing. Um, one of these is quite handy just for repairing broken batten pocket ends. Again, they just bolt onto the sail, so there's nothing difficult to do. Uh, if you're in mast furling with vertical battens, Take a couple of joining kits for, with you, um, yeah. like this, and some spare battens. I quite like this stuff uh, for normal um, slab mainsails. If you get a problem okay. with your bolt rope on the corner of the, the mainsail, uh, you pop 
quite often get damaged down here where it starts to tear yeah. all the leech ladings on. You can use stuff like this. So all the race baits used to hold their, their clues okay. on. Take it through the through the sail and around the boom, do a couple of laps and stick it on and it will take the load off the, the okay. bolt brake wearing. Really quite clever. handy. You can get a narrow one that we do as well for going on the front of the furling genoa to stop the furling genoa pulling against the sail entry. So a strip of that's quite handy. Go that can take the load of a... Oh, yeah. Wow. Take the, you know, wrap three or four times round, 50 yeah. foot of each loading, it'll be absolutely fine. Wow. Um, I'd also carry some Dyneema, um, it's a Dyneema string, and that will cover pretty well everything you need to do in terms of first aid to get you back to port to a sailmaker to fix it properly. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was of help. Make sure that you like us, make sure that you subscribe to us and stay in touch for the next episode.